Hi there, my name's Tony Pears and I run a small business called Curly Girly Crafts based here in Colchester where I teach a variety of classes such as enamelling, felt making, silver clay, flame work and encaustic art. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about enamelling which is fusing glass to metal. Here's an example. If I can get the lighting right, here we go. So this is a copper blank that has had glass fused to the front and the back and the glass comes in a powder form and then this one's actually had a transfer put on the front because I'm actually working on a commissioned piece so I have 12 of these to do. Let me also show you a few other examples. So here we have a, um, a piece that's had various little bits of glass fused on as well in the kiln and then I've swirled them. Um, this little one is a transparent enamel that then has some glass beads fused on the top. So anything glass will go in the kiln so you can fire it and experiment, which is great. What else have we got here? Oh yeah, this one I want to show you. So this one shows you a variety of different opaque colours that you can use in the kiln. Next I'm going to go on to the stages of how to enamel and hopefully I can cut this down so it doesn't become the world's longest video. I now want to talk to you about various pieces of equipment you'll need for enamelling. It's not the cheapest of hobbies by far, but it's well worth the investment. These copper blanks, for example, range from between one to three pounds per item, but you wouldn't need a lot to get started. It's just because I teach classes, I need to have a variety from people to choose from. This is, of course, another option for you. Come along to a class and try before you decide whether you want to buy all the pieces. Anyway, let's move on to my work area. Here I have a sieve with glass powder in it. Enamel is essentially ground down glass and it comes in a variety of colours. My blank is waiting to have enamel powder sifted onto it and it is resting on two poles of coins but people use a variety of different things. It's just you want a gap between so that you can lift your piece up using the palette knife and rest it on the trivet. The trivet is what we use to place our pieces into the kiln this one can sit up to six pieces, so one here, one here, one here, and the same on the other side. You can also buy some that only rest one or a couple of pieces. It depends what you're doing and how often you're firing. Right, I'm just gonna quickly move over to the kiln. So here is my kiln, which again is one of your more expensive items to use. It tends to be the best way to fire enamel, although you can torch fire, and I'll do a video about that at another time. If you can see, the kiln is coming up to temperature, so the red temperature at the top is what the temperature the kiln is actually at, and 800, the bottom temperature, is what it's um, set to reach. I've just got my little piece sitting on a trivet ready to fire, and alongside I have my firing fork, which is what I'm going to use to put my piece into the kiln. The next stage is to apply the glass powder to the copper blank. So I need to tip the powder into my sieve. Apologies for the sound because I now have the kiln on. Very necessary for this. I'm just going to go around the edge of my pre-cleaned copper blank with the enamel powder, which as I say is ground down glass. And then when I've covered all the edges, I will then go over the central area and just make sure that I can't see any copper. It's better though to have two thin layers than one thick one. So if I see that it's getting a little bit thick, then I might take it off, the powder off and, and reapply it. I have my stilt prepared and I've cleaned the edges with a file. And now I'm going to proceed to hopefully lift up my blank and rest it on the trivet, ready for firing. So now I'm going to fire my piece. I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to video this, but we'll give it a go. So I need to open the kiln up. As you can see how red hot it is. And then I'm going to get my firing fork and place my piece roughly in the center of the kiln. And now I'll get the door shut. Now, because I've done it like that, my temperature has actually dropped quite a lot. Can you see the red temperature has gone to 714? I want it to be much closer to 800. So I'm now going to wait until it gets up to about 750 degrees and then I can time it. It's very short firing. It's about 30 seconds, depending on how hot the kiln is. Once I've fired it, I'll show you how it looks. 
My piece has been in the kiln for around 30 seconds, so I'm now going to open it up and have a look and see if it looks fired. You can see how red hot the kiln is, so this is roughly 800 degrees C. I'm going to get my firing fork, take my piece out and just have a quick look. I'm looking to see, is it glossy? Yes. Does the surface look a little bit like orange peel? Yes, that's fine. Once you've fired your piece, you will then need to let it cool down and then you can quench it in some cold water so that you can handle it. Any pieces of exposed copper will inevitably need cleaning. Fire scale forms on copper and this is what the, some of these black pieces are. Even if I've got glass on the front, which will be what I will do next, I will still need to clean the edges because as you can see, they're quite black and I haven't applied any powder to those. I'm just gonna clean those with a file and a car brand and stone. Me again. Now I just wanted to show you the piece. Oh, <laughs> wrong side. The piece now it's been fired. So as you can see, it's glossy. It has um, a slightly orange peel surface, which is fine because this is the back and I'm going to fire it again, which gives it a little bit of protection when it goes into the kiln again. Now, as I've already shown you, I've cleaned the front and so that's ready for me to put some enamel powder onto it. Different colours have different um, firing ranges, so you'll need to have a look at them when you buy them and just follow the guidelines. But it tends to be, um, whites tend to need quite a lot of firing and reds over fire very quickly, so you need to be a bit more cautious with them. I'm aiming to do some more videos where I can show you some different techniques, so I just wanted to show you the basics of applying the enamel powder to a, a surface and then firing it and the same will apply on the front and the back but you do need to apply a layer on the front and the back otherwise the um, there won't be an equal tension on the metal and the glass may break off I'm going to finish here just to say that if you're interested in enamelling classes please get in touch my email address is tony at cgcrafts.co.uk and you can find the website at www.cgcrafts.co.uk. It'd be great to hear from you. Bye.